Ryan Trahan's videos aren't exactly Hollywood productions. In his last video, he's mostly filming and starring in the video all by himself. Coincidentally, I'm in my tiny home that we lived in and traveled in for about a year. We bought it vandalized and redid the inside, video link below, but the outside, uh, Still needs a little love. Ryan's third shot is out of focus. He's using his iPhone to film and his graphics are pretty basic, yet he's getting millions of views. What's his secret? For one, it's his editing. Oh, sorry. Which we can 100% do in CapCut. After I show you how, I'll tell you what else Ryan does that you can do with your crappy phone and out of focus shots to get millions of views like Ryan. Here's a simple graphic from Ryan's latest video. It's literally him dragging his face around in Photoshop and making a screen recording. But we don't need Photoshop or a screen recorder to do this in CapCut. This is all we need to do. Find a map on the internet somewhere, and in his case, he used a really simple one. So I found this map, which is pretty simple and basic. Then I'm gonna change the aspect ratio to 16 by nine, which is the ratio we want to use on YouTube for long format videos. Then we will scale and position this to about as wide as we want this to be, not as tight as we want it, but as wide, because we're gonna be getting a little tighter in a minute. And then you'll notice that he had numbers with these different places that he was going to visit. And that's actually a good thing to know that, hey, we got three stops we're gonna make and you're teasing what's coming up to give people a reason to stay. So that's, that's really important. So let's go ahead and create some numbers. Let's jump on to text, grab default text down to the timeline, make it last a duration of this graphic. And we're going to just type in the number one and maybe choose a better font. How about this thick one, Oblix Pro? I like that, it's nice and big and readable. We're probably gonna have a white background and black text. So I'm gonna make this text black starting now by clicking on this and dragging this down to black. And can't even see it now, but it's, but it's there. We'll put it here so we can find it. Next, we need a white background for this black text. So let's jump over to Media, Library, and scroll down a little bit, and you should find a plain white background here. We're just gonna click and drag that onto the timeline. Now you can't see anything, so we're gonna drag the one and put it on top of that. We're gonna go to the end of the timeline and make sure these are all the same duration, so one doesn't stop at a different time than another. And now we need this white just to be a small circle. So to start, let's put the one in the dead center here, and you'll see why in a minute. And because I have two things selected, I can use these icons to align the center and align the center again. And now they're both dead center. Next, we click on just the white and select mask. And we select a circle and it puts a circle, hey, right in the dead center, which is kind of convenient. Then we'll just scale this guy down. And then we want to click off so we can get a good feel to see if that ratio is right. It looks pretty good to me. Now we're going to need three of these. So I'm just going to duplicate this twice right now and you'll see why. I'm going to hit Command C on my keyboard or just hit edit, copy, or control C on a PC, and then position the playhead at the end, and then I'll hit paste or command V, control V, go to the end again, and hit command V again, and now I've got, I've got three circles. Let me just change these numbers because we need three of them, just make that a two, and this is just a way to be efficient so you don't have to be redoing things from scratch every time. Let's make that guy a three. Now we want to nest these two clips together, the one and the colored background. And to do that, we select both of them. We right clip and we choose create compound clip. Then we'll do the same thing for the two and the three. We'll drag them all on top of the map here. Now we have all three numbers on top of each other. They're too big, we wanna make them smaller. So I'm gonna start with number three since it's on top and I'm going to adjust its size by clicking on video basic, scale it down a little bit. And that's probably about where I want it. And I'm just gonna drag it over here. So our stop number three would be here. And I want it a little smaller still. I'm gonna remember what this number is here so that I can repeat it. That is 55%. So let's click on the two, drag it where you want it to go and scale this guy down to 55 by just typing in five, five and positioning it here in Oregon, which is where I am right now in my RV. And then click on number one and do the same thing. I'll position one down here in Southern California where I'm from. And now we need my head to drag around the screen. How do we do that? Well, let's go back into our media folder, find an image of me. Here's one. I'm gonna put it over here so there's nothing else in the background. And I'm just gonna have CapCut cut me out. To do that, you simply click on cut out. And if I contrast the background really well, it cuts it out pretty well if I just choose auto cut it down here. And bam, yeah, instantly looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna scale it way up just so I can see it. What a 
doofus. And next we're going to click on mask and choose circle again. And the circle jumped down there. We're just going to position it where we want it by dragging it over my face. And this is just going to allow me to cut myself out a little more precisely in the shape of a circle like that. When I have the mask tab open, clicking and dragging just moves the mask around. It doesn't move me around. To move me around, I need to click on basic. And now I can scale and move myself around just like before. So let's go ahead and position me over here on top of all the other tracks. And I'm gonna click on me, I'm gonna scale me down maybe a little bit because he's kind of big relative to the other stuff. Then I'm just gonna click and drag me to position one. And let's say all we want is for me to travel across this map up to position two. How do I do that? I simply go to the beginning of my face, make sure the clip is highlighted. I select position, then I move the playhead to the end of the sequence or to the end of where I want my motion to stop. And here we have a little over four seconds. And I'm just going to click and drag this up here to two. And now it automatically created another keyframe for that. And I can play it like this. And there's me moving. Now, because I'm going so slow, that's way too slow for this world. So I'm just going to click on this keyframe and just drag it back. And the closer I get it to the other keyframe, the faster this will go. For example, if I've got it really close here, watch this. Whoop, he jams over there. We don't want that. We want him to travel casually like he's with intent and enjoying the journey. And now it looks about this fast. Okay, that's that's great. And in Ryan's video, the whole map was moving. How do we do that? Well, we could try to create another compound clip here so that we can animate everything all at once. But when I right click now, create compound clip isn't an option because we've already created a compound clip. We've created three of them. So what do we do? There's always a workaround. That's part of the fun of learning to edit is if it can't do something you really want it to, you can usually force it to do it. So we're just going to force it to do it by exporting this. I'll hit export, give it a name, call it map one, make sure it's in the right location, hit export. And very quickly it exported that. Then I hit cancel to get out of this window, go back to cap cut, back to homepage, create a new project, select import and find that video we just created. And I think I put it in this folder here, map one. All you do is drag the map to the timeline, position the playhead at the beginning of the map, because in Ryan's video, the whole map with everything on it is moving towards you together. So now we're just going to set a keyframe here for both position and scale. Scale and position, just click on these little diamonds here for each of those properties. Then we move the playhead forward about that far until I, around when I stop. Then I'm just going to rescale and reposition the map to where we want it to end up. So we get this. What? That's some pretty pro stuff done really quickly in CapCut. So what's Ryan's secret? Well, he's doing what a lot of YouTubers that are blowing up quickly do, and he is making videos on trending topics. Tiny homes are trending, look at this. Then he levels it up even further by adding something unexpected, luxury, luxury tiny homes. You don't expect that. You expect tiny homes just to be simple, but what's a luxury one do? The reason this works is because it creates a question. The idea, the title, and the thumbnail all create a question instantly on your mind that you need the answer to. And the reason you stay engaged is because he creates pattern interrupts in the form of more questions. Once you see what that first tiny home looks like, even before you get the full tour, he's teasing you for what the next tiny home is going to be because that's going to be, you know, even cooler. So you have to keep watching to the end of the video. No way. You know who else is amazing at this? Jenny Hoyos. This 18 year old YouTube sensation is killing it. Watch this video right now and do what she does to get millions of views.